In this video I'll be looking at 23 different filter and filter combinations for infrared photography, mainly focusing on near-infrared plus visible light images rather than just pure infrared images. I'll be looking at how the images appear white balanced and for some of the filters how they appear with certain hue shift or channel swaps on them as well. The filters I'll be looking at are mostly ones that I've seen other people recommend for getting certain effects such as yellow foliage or red foliage or pink foliage. The photos were all taken with a full spectrum converted camera. You can take infrared images with a standard unconverted camera, but if you're trying to take images that combine infrared and visible light, you do really need a converted camera. All the images I'll be showing were taken in RAW format and then white balanced in Adobe Camera RAW. The range of temperature and tint adjustments in Adobe Camera Raw are often not enough to white balance infrared photos, where an extreme white balance adjustment is often required. This can be remedied by using a custom camera profile with a pre-applied white balance adjustment. So for each image that I show, I'll include what white balance adjustment was baked into the profile used. White balance was then set on each image on the clouds. I'll hopefully do some further tests in a later video to see if the same white balance results can be achieved in camera or if the white balance adjustments are too extreme. Using default white balance settings, most of the images are extremely red or orange before they've been properly white balanced. My understanding is that the colors in infrared plus visible light images are dependent on your camera model or manufacturer. So the results I got in these images, which were taken with my Canon camera, might have slightly different colors than if I was using a full spectrum converted Sony camera or Nikon camera, etc. For each filter, I'll be showing a photo of the filter first before I show the image taken with it. And just to note that in some of the photos of the filters, you might see there's weird lines or marks behind them. This is just down to the way I photographed them on a bit of PTFE that had various scratches and stuff, and that just shows up in the images. It's not any actual scratches on the filters themselves. Another thing to note is that the images weren't all shot in quick succession, although I did try <laughs> to do that as best as I could. But I often had to wait for the clouds to clear the sun. So it's possible that in some images the sun was brighter than it was in others. But I am including the exposure information on each image, which will hopefully give you a general idea of how much light each filter or filter stack lets through. We'll start off with a pure infrared filter, the Zomé 950 nanometer filter. This gives a black and white image once white balanced. With the Zomé 760 nanometer filter, we start to see a little color, but the image is basically monochrome. I would say that actually you shouldn't really see any color in an image taken with a 760 nanometer filter. So I think probably the Zomé filter is leaking some visible light here. Moving down to 720 nanometers, we start to see quite a bit more color in the image. Again, we're probably getting a bit more visible light in the image with this Zomé filter than you should get with a 720 nanometer filter. If we add a 163 degree hue shift, that gives us a blue sky and slightly pinky orange foliage. Carrying on down the spectrum, we come to the Zomé 680 nanometer filter. This passes some red light as well as infrared light, resulting in a more colorful image again. If we swap the red and blue channels, this gives us a blue sky with yellow foliage. Or we can apply a 180 degree hue shift, which gives us a blue sky and orange foliage. The next filter we'll look at is the HB650 filter. As you can guess from the name, it lets through light starting at 650 nanometers. As we continue to reduce the wavelength at which we start letting light through, we get a more colorful image. Using a 146 degree hue shift gives us pink foliage and a teal sky. Or we can apply a minus 166 degree hue shift, which gives us a blue sky and orange foliage. The red filter I tested is the Pig Iron Red R1, but this should be pretty much the same as other red or 25A filters. It passes light with a wavelength longer than 580 nanometers. 
The red 25A filter is traditionally used with a red-blue channel swap to give nice yellow foliage and a blue sky. For this reason it is sometimes referred to as the Goldie filter. If we instead apply a 180 degree hue shift that gives us orange foliage and a blue sky. Or if we apply a 155 degree hue shift that will give us more of an aerochrome or IR chrome effect with red foliage. The CB565 filter is an orange filter that passes light with a wavelength longer than 565 nanometers. Other orange filters are likely to be pretty similar to this. With an EIR channel swap, that is, we use the blue channel for the red channel output, the red channel is used for the green channel output, and the green channel is used for the blue channel output. That gives us purple pink foliage and a teal sky. Or we can use a 119 degree hue shift for the same effect. Alternatively, we can add a 143 degree hue shift, and that will give us red foliage and blue sky with a aerochrome style effect. The CB550 is a slightly lighter orange filter that cuts light below 550 nanometers. Doing an EIR channel swap gives a very similar result to what we saw with the CB565 with bright pink foliage and a teal sky. Using a 143 degree hue shift also gives pretty much the same result as we saw with the CB565 with blue sky and red foliage. The Lee 101 yellow filter is a gel filter designed to be used with lighting. I layered it with a cheap UV filter as I thought the gel filter would be too flexible or floppy to use in a filter ring without anything hard behind it to keep it straight. The Lee 101 is the closest thing I've been able to find to the old Lee number 12 yellow minus blue gel filter that was designed for black and white photography. That filter no longer seems to be available um, and the Lee 101 is the closest thing I've found that is still available. It cuts light approximately below 480 nanometers. The number 12 yellow filter, which I'm using this Lee 101 as a replacement for, is traditionally used with the EAR channel swap. That's where the blue channel is swapped to the red channel, the red channel swapped to the green channel, and the green channel swapped to the blue channel. And that gives an aerochrome style image with blue sky and red foliage. To reduce IR contamination in the green and blue channels of the resulting image, we can modify the channel mixer parameters slightly so that we use um, the blue channel for the red channel as before, but on the green channel we use 150% of the red channel and minus 50% of the blue channel. And then for the blue channel we use 150% of the green channel and minus 50% of the blue channel. The idea of this is that the image we've taken with the yellow filter the blue channel should be infrared only, while the red channel normally contains red plus infrared light and the green channel contains green plus infrared light. So by removing the blue channel from the green channel and the blue channel when we're doing the swapping, we're reducing the amount of infrared light in them. If instead of using a channel swap we use a 109 degree hue shift, we can achieve an image pretty much the same as the standard EIR channel swap or we can use a 51 degree hue shift to get purple foliage with a teal sky. The ZB2 is a filter that lets through violet or deep blue plus UV light and it also lets through infrared as well. ZB2 is the name used by the Chinese filter manufacturers and it's roughly equivalent to the shot UG3 filter. It's a fairly standard infrared filter, which is often referred to as the super blue filter. If we add a minus 32 degree hue shift, we remove some of the magenta tint from the sky, taking it to a more normal blue sky color, and the foliage turns orange. If we don't use any filter on the camera at all to give us a full spectrum image, it gives us a rather muddy image result with brown foliage. I have played around with channel mixing and hue shifting on full spectrum images previously, but never really found a result that I particularly liked. Fluorescent filters are designed to add a magenta tint to the image to compensate for the green tint of fluorescent lighting. 
I think I read somewhere that the fluorescent filter was a good filter for infrared and would give you white foliage. However, when I tested it, that doesn't seem to be the case and the resulting image is pretty boring, looking similar to just a standard full spectrum image. This filter is made from GRB3 or KG3 glass in one millimeter thickness, combined with a Li-139 primary green filter. The GRB3 or KG3 glass can be thought of as an ND filter for infrared light that doesn't reduce the amount of visible light. GRB3 is the name used for the Chinese produced filters, while KG3 is the shot designation. It gives pink purple foliage and teal skies when white balanced. Lee Primary Green seems to be the recommended filter to stack with KG3 for this effect. I have tried various other green filters, but Lee Primary Green gave me the best results. This particular filter stack was suggested at hiddenrealms.ch and I'll put a link to their post in the description. This next filter stack combines a 2mm thick GRB3 or KG3 filter with a Lee 729 scuba blue gel. It gives results similar to Kalari's IR chrome filter. Foliage turns red and the sky is blue or slightly teal. And I heard about this particular stack through the ultraviolet photography forums and I'll put a link to that in the description. The resulting images are different from Aerochrome in that with IR Chrome, reds stay red, but with Aerochrome style images, reds are shifted to yellow. There's also the argument that Aerochrome images should actually have magenta foliage rather than red, but in my mind it doesn't really matter. This filter stack is one I came up with myself, though I expect other people have already tried it. It's made from 1.5mm of GRB3 or KG3 glass stacked with an orange filter. This results in an image that has a higher proportion of visible light to infrared light than just using the orange filter by itself. If we apply an EIR channel swap, we get a similar result to what we saw with the orange CB565 filter, except that the colours are less saturated, which is not what I was expecting. I was thinking because there would be more visible light in the image, the colours would be stronger, but obviously that's not the case. If instead of the channel swap we apply a hue shift of 109 degrees, this gives a similar result to the EIR channel swap, though the colours look slightly better in my opinion. Alternatively, we can go with a more complicated channel mix of the red channel equals 200% of the red channel, minus 50% of the green channel and minus 50% of the blue channel. The green channel equals 200% of the red channel and minus 100% of the blue channel. And the blue channel equals 200% of the green channel and minus 100% of the blue channel. And this will give us a blue sky with purple foliage. This filter stack is comprised of a QB2 filter and 1mm thick GRB3 or KG3. I think I purchased it from AliExpress as an Aerochrome filter, but the results aren't much like Aerochrome in my opinion, but the images it gives are okay with reddish orange foliage. The next set of filter comparisons are based on filter stacks used by Mark Del Piro, as detailed on his website truecolorinfrared.com. They mostly combine a blue filter and yellow filter to create a green one. The idea behind the filters is that you should be able to get similar results to the IR Chrome or Candy Chrome. However, I would say that Mark's results with these filters are much better than what I got. Uh, whether this is down to differences in the way different cameras handle colours or there's some additional processing steps he's taking that I'm missing, I'm not sure. So to start off with, this is the JB470 filter used in some of the stacks and how it looks by itself. And then this is the QB19 filter used in some of the stacks and how that looks by itself. So first we'll look at the QB19 plus JB470 layered together, which gives us a green filter. Mark calls this stack the Secura infrared filter, which should give pink foliage. 
Next we'll look at the QB19 Plus Lee 101. This isn't a filter that Mark suggests, but it's one I wanted to see if we can use the Lee 101 instead of the JB470 and get the same result. If you look at the colours of the actual filters, they look quite different, but once the resulting image is white balanced, they are quite similar. Next, looking at the QB3 filter plus JB470, this stack Mark calls the Snowflake infrared filter, and he says it should give white foliage, which as you can see is not really what I got. Again, I decided to see if using the Lee 101 filter in place of the JB470 filter would give similar results. As you can see from the photo of the filter, it's a much darker green than when we used JB470 and the resulting image is quite different as well. Looking next at the QB3 plus GRB3 or KG3 filter, Mark calls this one the Goldie infrared filter as it gives yellow foliage which is not to be confused with the red filter, which is commonly referred to as the Goldie filter, as it gives yellow foliage when a red-blue channel swap is applied. This filter should give you yellow foliage without having to do a channel swap. To me, the result looks very similar to the ZB2 Super Blue filter. Finally, this last set of filter tests was done on a completely different day. These are using plastic ND filters which reduce visible light but have no effect on infrared light. So we start off with a full spectrum image with no filters just for reference. Next we add a one stop ND and this makes the image much more interesting. The foliage becomes whiter and more pinky coloured. Next we add a two stop ND instead and again the foliage is getting whiter. And finally, we'll look at a three stop plastic ND. And now the foliage is almost just white with no real color to it. So to wrap up, what I tested here was only a very small sample of possible filters and filter combinations. When you add all the various post processing changes you can make as well, the possibilities for different color combinations in infrared images are almost endless. Out of the ones I tested, I like both the CB565, which is the orange filter, and the Lee 101, which is the yellow filter, uh, for the red foliage, blue sky look, and also for the candy pink foliage and teal sky look. A red filter is also good for the yellow foliage and blue sky look once a uh, channel swap is applied. And full spectrum plus a uh, plastic ND4 is quite nice for slightly pink tinted white foliage and blue sky. The IR Chrome style filter which is the Lee 729 plus 2 millimeters of GRB3 and the Candy Chrome style filter which is Lee 139 plus 1 millimeters of GRB3 both give nice results when white balanced that don't require any extra processing but I don't like the amount of light that the filter stacks cut. I quite like shooting handheld and so I want to keep my shutter speed as high as possible to avoid any blur from camera shake. Both these filters could well be good for video, meaning you might not need a separate ND filter to keep your shutter speed down. I can't come to any firm conclusion about which filters will be best for me yet. They will have to wait until I've tested to see if I can get white balance results in camera and also to see how channel swap and hue adjustments affect the images in video. Ideally, I want filters that can be used for both stills and video. I don't think I'll test so many filters when I'm looking at this, but hopefully I can get that testing done soon. And obviously once I have, I'll post my results here.